Welcome to this Alan Talks Tech video. If you'd like additional information on my technology videos, please visit my wiki at alantesswiki.pbworks.com. Both of these technologies are based on the LTE network and are targeted at low power wide area networking. And their primary application is going to be for the Internet of Things. LTEM has a variety of acronyms. Uh, it was developed by the 3GPP, of course, and was also known as CATM1 or LTEM or LTE CATM1 or even EMTC or Enhanced Machine Type Communications. This was part of release 13, which came out of 3GPP in Q1 of 2016. So here's a quick overview of LTEM or CATM1. It uses just 1.4 megahertz instead of 20 megahertz as LTE normally does. Its uplink and downlink speed can be approximately one meg, but expect typical uh, throughputs of between 100 to 300 kilobits. Latency is around 10 to 15 milliseconds, and battery life for the devices which is used with this technology is typically around 10 years. The devices for this technology are designed to be low cost, and today are somewhere in the region of 10 to 15 dollars, but long-term goal is to get the devices down to about 5 dollars. Again, this technology is targeted at IoT applications and devices. One nice thing about LTEM is that firmware over-the-air updates, or FOTA, is possible. And one other very nice feature is that it will support VOLTE, or Voice over LTE. This is one of the very few technologies, if not the only technology, which is targeted for IoT that can actually support voice communication. This could actually be quite useful for emergency services, for example, a fire control within a building. Uh, as a last resort, you can break the glass and actually talk to somebody. NB-IoT is narrowband IoT. This is release 13, and it came out in 2016 in Q2. Let's take a quick look at narrowband IoT. It only uses 200 kilohertz of bandwidth compared to the um, 1.4 megahertz of LTEM. It's only half duplex as opposed to full duplex for LTEM. Its maximum data rate is 250 kilobits, um, but no roaming is supported by this technology, so it'll only work with fixed devices. You can't hand off from one base station to another. Latency can be relatively slow. It can be in the region of 1.6 to 10 seconds. Again, the technology is targeted at IoT devices, but the type of devices which are going to be stationary. Again, battery life is excellent, 10 years plus, possibly as high as 15 to 20 years. Again, the devices are going to be targeted to be very low cost in the $5 to $10 range. And once again, remember this came out as part of the 3GPP release 13, which came out in Q2 or June of 2016. NBIoT has three modes of operation. It can operate as a standalone technology. Uh, in the GSM band using just 200 kilohertz. It can operate within LTE uh, in band using again 200 kilohertz, or it can even sit between LTE uh, in the guard band, again using 200 kilohertz. Both of these technologies on the surface seem to achieve the same thing, but in fact they are targeted at different applications. CAT M1 or LTEM is designed mainly for higher throughput devices which are going to be mobile, while NBIoT is targeted more at stationary devices with very low throughputs. For example, electricity meters, gas meters, water meters would be an ideal application. Parking spots would also be an ideal application, parking meters, etc. 
And here's a quick comparison between LTM and NBIoT. This comparison isn't 100% accurate, but it may be what you would find typically in the field in terms of uh, practical operating characteristics. The peak data rate of LTM is going to be in reality somewhere around 384 kilobits, NBIoT frequently less than 100 kilobits. Latency for LTM somewhere in the region of perhaps between 50 to 100 milliseconds, NBIoT in the range of 1.5 to 10. Power consumption, LTM best at medium data rates, NBIoT best at very low data rates. Mobility, LTM, yes. NBIoT, no. Voice for LTEM is possible. It's not possible with NBIoT. Both of these technologies use a single antenna. It appears currently that the initial deployment for LTEM is more heavily favored for North America, while the European market more heavily favors NBIoT. But long term, as these technologies are complementary, I would expect to see both of these technologies deployed in both regions. Thank you for watching this Alan Talks Tech video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you'd like to get more information on my technology videos with additional material, you can visit my wiki at alantestwiki.ppworks.com. Once again, Thanks for viewing.